Here's another tool review. Uh, most of you drivers don't know about this. You guys that weld a lot probably know, or you should. Anyway, this is not a new tool. I've had this for a number of years, probably, I don't know, 20 years. But I don't use it very often. It's called the Arc Air. And um, it's used for burning metal or gouging and since I'm working at home in a, in a home shop I don't buy large electrodes these are small ones and uh, when you're in a industrial shop with three phase machines large uh, machines you can um, use arc rods about the size of my finger and use you know six eight hundred amps of power I'm only going to push about two hundred amps of power DC um, with the uh, arc welder so most home arc welders really don't have the power to do this but I do have a larger arc welder lar the, uh, uh, probably one of the bigger ones that you can get for uh, working in a house anyway what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this plate I welded this on when I bought the uh, the trailer because it was attached to the old airbag but broken off of the frame and just hanging loose flopping around and I welded it on where it looked like it was right but putting the new airbags on it's not lining up like it's supposed to so I'm going to take uh, this plate back off and um, that side is good over there and if you look at how the bag is pretty well centered in that uh, steel plate that it's mounted to it's um, pretty well centered over there on that side and over here even though these are homemade plates that were added on later apparently I think they are anyway well I gotta burn these welds off and I could do it with a torch or a grinder but in order to show this tool, I'm going to do it with the um, the uh, uh, arc air they call it. I'm going to do it with that. So I'm going to take the bags off, or this bag off, because you see underneath here I'm not centered. Oh, I can drive it like this. It'll be fine, but it, it doesn't look right. It's just not right. And while I'm doing all this work and I'm home f during this Corona thing, I'm going to go on ahead and. Uh, take this plate off. I got two little short welds right here that are easy to get to and I got one underneath here and I got another one back here. Got the airbag off. Got room to work over here. I've got my ground clamp. If you guys have seen any of my older welding videos. I, I don't normally do welding videos because I am not a professional welder. Um, I did work as a welder for a few years at one time, but um, anyway, I, I like to have a, uh, a vice grip. I like to have my ground wire. Instead of a spring clamp, I like a vice grip because I can get a better bite on the ground, and I can also clamp it on a rusty, dirty, painted surface and twist it a few times and break through that when, uh, when, when I'm working on usually vehicles most of the time or machines. I don't have a clean metal place to clamp my ground to so I use a vice grip. Anyway I am uh, clamped on something that is welded to the the frame, the chassis, because that's where I'm going to be. We can't ground through something like like maybe this uh, this arm here, we can't ground through that because it's it's got bushings in here and uh, you may not get a good ground. It may find a ground somewhere else through a wire somewhere that it's not supposed to be going through and then you burn that wire in half um, or, so, you know, or something like that, not necessarily on this trailer but you always want to ground close to your work as close as practical and to something that is uh, um, welded to or part of the work itself especially using this high amperage by the way I got all my patches on here I'm going to paint them later 
but I got all my patches on there and on the other side. Okay, I'm going to crank this welder up. There's supposed to be a needle down here that I can see, uh, that I should be able to see, but it's not there. And um, it wasn't there when I bought the machine. But I know that, um, that it's kind of backwards from the way you normally turn things. So you turn it overhand to the left, and that raises the power up on it. And so I'm going to count my turns, though. So I can come back to where I was. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay, so it's about 18 turns. I'll try to remember that. Turn it up all the way. And the reason I want to remember this is so I know how to find out where my settings are for uh, stick welding. So I turned it up quite a ways. thing get shop air got an on and off button here this is on and that's off put an electrode in and you want to put it on the same side that has these little holes I don't know if I can see this on the camera or not let me see Okay, these little holes here, those four little little holes on that, that thing turns, by the way. So what happens is, this thing, it blows. Um, I, need to, I haven't used it in a long time, kind of forgetting how almost. Put this rod in here. And then this carbon arc, this will, will strike a, a real hot arc, so you saw me turn the machine up real high. And when I press the button for the air, it blows air out this side. When it, when it blows it out this side, it's going to blow the, uh, like a rooster tail of sparks. It's going to blow it to my right. Well, let me see, do I want it to blow to the right? I guess I can do that. I guess I can blow it to the right. If I don't want to blow it to the right, if I want to blow it to the left, then I turn it around this way and spin this thing around to that side. And now the holes are over here and and it will blow it'll blow to the left. But I can blow to the right because um, I'm gonna try that. I gotta go get my hood though. Okay, zooming in on those two welds. I'm gonna try to stay out of the way. I can't really see what I'm doing in the camera. Let's see. I forgot to, to say that I gotta clamp my uh, welder lead on this thing right here where I plug the air in right next to it. It's got a, a bolt hole in it for a permanent setup. This is not a permanent setup, it's temporary, so we just clamp it on there. And you can slide the boot over it if you want to.
Leave yourself about four inches, give or take, three, four inches of rod out there. Now these rods, they break real easy. That's why it's got a copper jacket on it. These things are very fragile, especially these small ones like this. But you can't use big ones with home equipment. The equipment's just not big enough to handle it. When I used these, when I welded in a pipe shop, some of the material was pretty thick. I mean, some of it was like up to a couple inches thick. And we would gouge out a seam that needed to be uh, machine welded with a super hot welding machine that I'm not going to get into explaining what it was. It was called a sub arc for those that know anything about welding. Anyway, I'm going to... That was a big machine. We ran around 600 amps out of it and and, uh, and uh, the, the rods were big, like the size of my, my little finger anyway. They were like at least half inch, five eighths, something like that. And this is very noisy too. It throws a lot of fire, so you got to make sure you got to make sure that where the rooster tail is blowing to, there's nothing that's going to light up. And I should have a fire extinguisher out here, but I don't. Anyway, I'm going to start right here and blow this weld off. I'm going to start over here and start blowing that weld off that way. Now this end of the rod never gets hot, so I can just take it off right there. That'll just knock off with a hammer. Or I could gouge it just a little bit more. I think I could. I think I can gouge just a little bit more right in here. I see the line. I see a gap between these two pieces of metal. Between the frame here and this. I do see, because you'll see a little chain of, of um, just a real small line. You can see it. And um, anyway. It's a good tool to have if you do a lot of metal work. Gotta wait for the compressor to catch up. That is one downfall is you need a big compressor and this thing uses a lot of air. I came back and cleaned it up a little bit.
and this chips real easy. That's clean enough. That'll just knock right off of there, but I got a weld under here to get and one on the other side. Well, I got the plate off. There's the uh, burn marks for these two that were on the outside that I did on video. So they're barely into the plate. And burn mark on the edge and on another edge. So, so much for um, arc air. Now I'm going to clean this thing up with the grinder a little bit and where they mount at, where it mounts at on the uh, underneath the frame there. Well there's your air arc, or arc air.